Traditional sentences don't always appeal to a judge in Northeast Ohio. I want you to see how municipal court judge Michael Ciccinetti sentenced a woman who had pepper sprayed a Burger King worker. He gave her a choice. You could take jail time or you could be pepper sprayed yourself by the victim who you maimed. So here's the weird part. Uh, the container was actually filled with a saline solution, but the defendant did not know that when she opted for the spray. Mm -hmm. No, I hate it. Stop it. No, just water. In another case, the same judge sentenced a woman to walk 30 miles because she'd stiffed a cab driver for a 30 mile trip. And here's the video to prove it. And then there's the time he ordered a woman to spend the night in the woods because she'd abandoned 40 kittens in a park during the winter. And the time that he sentenced three men to wear chicken suits in public. For soliciting prostitutes. The judge also ordered a DUI offender to spend five days in jail and visit victims of drunk driving in the morgue. And that judge himself, Judge Michael Chicanetti, joins me now live from Cleveland. Judge, thank you so much for being on the program. I rarely get an opportunity to speak with judges, so this is a real treat. I, I, um, I want to laugh half the time at some of these sentences. I want to cheer half the time. And then I sort of pull back and I think, what about judicial temperament and the sanctity of the higher office that you, that you hold? How do you balance that? Well, I think, Ashley, first of all, you have to remember that these are all misdemeanor, misdemeanor offenses. These aren't felonies. These aren't real serious crimes. And in every case, I give the defendant a choice. They can, they can do the traditional jail time or they can uh, choose to do one of these alternative sentences. So that escapes sort of the Eighth Amendment cruel and unusual punishment issue, right? Well, maybe not the unusual, but <laughs> but it's uh, but it's their but it's their it's their choice. They they choose to yeah. do it. What about the woman, uh, you know, who was sentenced to walk 30 miles, and she took up, you know, she took you up on your offer? What if she'd been injured? Because that is a pretty aggressive feat. Uh, would you have been liable for that in some way? Were you ever concerned that that's a pretty arduous? Thing to ask her to do? Well, you know, and that's, that's a valid point. Uh, you know, I take all the precautions to, make, to avoid any injury. We have supervision on it. Uh, for instance, that day there was thunder and lightning, so we had to pull her off for a while to make sure. Mm. You know, that, that's, that, that's what, part of the sentence. I have to ensure compliance and I have to ensure safety and uh, I have to ensure supervision because without those, uh, the sentence wouldn't be effective. So effective. That's, I'm glad you ended with that on that sentence because I, uh, I was asking Mel Robbins, one of our legal analysts, what she thought of this. And she said, you know, jail isn't always effective. We turn out a lot of recidivists. We turn out a lot of people who are worse after they come out of jail. And so this is sort of a, a creative way of trying to really make something stick and emotionally affect somebody by their crimes. So to that end, is it working? Have you got enough of a track record at this point to see that what you're doing makes a difference in those defendants' uh, lives after they actually carry out their sentence? I, I think so, Ashley. I would put my recidivism rate up against any other court, uh, particularly for the ones that, that have uh, performed these type of sentences. And, and, and my experience has been that they, they just don't come back. You know, my initial criteria is that they, it's usually a first offender, they're young and impressionable, and somewhat remorseful. Absent that, I, I'm not going to, I wouldn't met out one of these types of sentences. So I, I guess the other question I have for you is that, you know, we have sentencing guidelines in the American system of jurisprudence for a reason, so that we can ensure consistency and uniformity, so that one guy doesn't get overpunished where the next guy gets underpunished. And ef effectively, is this regulated enough to, to fit into that basket? Well, I don't have to follow those specific sentencing guidelines like the federal court does. And, and it, there, it's not one size fits all. You can't do that. Every individual is different. As they approach the bench, I have probably two seconds to, to read them as they're coming up there. And by the time they get to me, I, I, I know where it's going. Judge Chicanetti, I uh, appreciate you coming on. Thanks. Like I said, I always love uh, the opportunity to speak to the judges. Uh, we don't get it very often. Nice to have you. And I look forward well, to our talk again. Well, thank Judge you, Ashley. In Ohio. Thank